ever looked at that tiny nub of fresh ginger you just bought in the supermarket and been devastated by the price of it and then wished you'd got more because the ingredients list that you've got requires more but you're having to eke it out or do you just like bits of fresh ginger in your tea because I do but it's so expensive and yet we can actually grow it ourselves even in temperate climates now this sad looking wrinkly bit of ginger that's actually sat forgotten in my fridge yeah this makes me sad too because you know it's been moved about a bit and it got lost in the fridge which it's not really lost it's just because I haven't used it mainly because it's a really fiddly piece it wasn't big even when it was bought but the one thing that this has is the nodes so you can see here it's really trying to sprout now what you can see is like here this is called a scab or a scar and actually this is what the supermarkets do they cut off these nodes in the effort to stop it actually sprouting. So what I'm going to do today is show you a way that you might actually be able to grow your own ginger here in the UK or any cold weather climate. So for me, I'm going to have a go at growing mine outside because every time I look up, can I grow it outside in a temperate climate? Everybody goes, yeah, but you need a greenhouse. Well, that's great, but I don't have a greenhouse. And I grow everything, including aubergines and tomatoes outside. So if I can grow things like aubergines and yacon and everything else that are supposed to be in a greenhouse, but I can grow them outside, then why can't I grow ginger outside? So that's what I'm gonna have a go at doing. And I'm going to show you and take you along on my journey with me. So here in this bowl what I've got is other bits of ginger and I've been soaking them and what you can see is those nodes have already started to sprout and this you can see quite clearly is that scab. So there we go. Now what you can do is this is where it will also send out the roots and eventually if you wanted to you could just take off that piece and you can plant that but here's the thing about this if you saw my last video about propagation where we started doing cuttings it's a similar process except this isn't a root this is actually the rhizome and this is where all the energy is stored. So when we're doing weeding in the garden and we're thinking in terms of perennial weeds such as dandelions and things and they've got that huge taproot, well that taproot is the same as this rhizome and when people are saying you can't get rid of them and they're really difficult and things like that, well that's like this, it's what feeds that plant. And so with any difficult plant that's hard to get rid of, it's doing this all the time. It's trying to send up these shoots because these are what feed this. Okay, so without this, they can't feed this, but in turn, this is what also feeds this. It's a cycle, right? So for this plant to have a better start, Rather than take it away from the rhizome, its food store, we're actually going to leave it on. All right, so I've got all these in a bowl and what I've been doing is I've been soaking them from, for a couple of days in water, nothing else, and I've been changing that water. Now, if you've got really good tap water, that will do. But if it's like mine, where mine is rubbish, then you, I, I've been using bottled water. But even with my seedlings and things, um, I boil my water and let it cool before I use it. So that's all I've been doing for a couple of days, changing out. Now, because we're in February, I can't just put these straight outside because the frost will get them and kill them because they are a tropical plant. They don't need direct sunlight. They need humidity, 
which is great in my house because my house is humid. I'm drying clothes in here all the time. That creates humidity. I've got south facing windows, so that's where they're gonna go. Although there is sunlight, it's muted at the moment because it's winter. So they're not going to get scorched. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna use these seed sprouting trays because they need moisture, but they don't like their roots sat in water. So these will be perfect because we're only starting them inside. We don't need them to be in a lot of compost for a lot of time. And then this tray at the bottom will catch any excess water. So the mix that I've got for them is actually a cactus potting mix. So I'll fill that up and then show you what I'm gonna do. So this is the cactus mix. And because it's bagged, it's actually quite dry. So what I'm gonna do is water this first before I put the rhizomes into here um, because I don't want to be trying to do that with them in there. So let's get that watered first. And you might just want to give this a little bit of a mix because some of these potting mixers, when they've been in the bag, can get a bit hydrophobic, which means that the water will run straight through instead of actually hydrating the mix. Now, because that's quite damp, this is where these drainage holes come in handy because it'll allow that water to drain through. So we will actually let that drain again before we put these in because what we don't want is for these to rot whilst they're trying to send out any roots. And here you can see now just how much water actually went through. So all I need to do is just swap this tray out for another one. So now we've done that, all we're going to do is take these rhizomes and just place them. They can be quite close to each other because again, this is not their final planting position. I just want to see how many I can fit in here. So I think that's gonna be all of them actually. Make sure I orientate them the right way. Right, and you're not going to bury these deep. They actually don't need burying deep. And it's another one of the reasons why we're not gonna put them straight outside because they'd have no protection at all. My last frost date is mid-May, but if I watch my long range forecast, it may be that I don't get anything forecast from the beginning of May, or it might be that I could still end up with a hard frost towards June. So these will be able to sit in here until then. Now, the one thing that I do have is a cold frame and I have the ability to move these in and out of the house on nice days to prepare them for going outside. But for now, that's all they need. And so we're gonna leave it there and I'll keep you updated on how these get on and what they're doing. And we're gonna see what harvest we get from these later on in the year. And if I can indeed grow them outside here in a temperate zone eight in the UK. So thanks for watching and bye for now. See you next time.